In this part of the tutorial on the Vega interior, I'm adding the radio. So you see there I have a photo of a AM radio and AM radio for a Vega. This would have been similar to the AM radios used in other General Motors cars in the early 70s. AM only radios, of course, were the norm for decades and decades. Gradually, FM radios started coming in in the 60s, and then at the end of the 70s, 8-track players started to come in. But the technology of car stereos didn't really catch up to what you would have in your home until the 80s, arguably. So the Vega never really had a very fancy stereo as an option. And the AM radios generally were in stereo. It wouldn't have made sense because the broadcasts were not in stereo. But in any case, I wanted to have an authentic period radio in the interior because it would be fairly easy to do because the parts scarcity of a Vega wouldn't necessarily be an issue. Comes back to the old... Goes back to what I said last time that General Motors standardized their parts. So here I'm basically deleting the background to the photo to create the texture. And you can see that the perspective is off. There are a lot of things that are less than ideal with this. It's compromise, as in many other cases. Even when I finish the interior, it will not be as good as I would prefer. If I were doing a Corvette or if I were doing something where the parts are more common, I would include a lot more photos in the texture. And the result would be a much more realistic texture than what I'm going to end up with for this interior, which ultimately would mean a more realistic interior. Because as I've said already, generally if you're modeling anything that's not interactive in a game, or a movie even, you're much better off using good textures rather than a detailed model. You're never going to come... Well, it's unlikely that you will ever convince somebody with a very good 3D model with today's technology, unless you put so much effort into it that you end up killing your frame rate. So they're shaving the side of that. And then I'm going to have to recenter that because the perspective is throwing everything off. So center that there. And now it's, you know, not great, but for the tiny scale I'm going to be working in, it's not going to matter very much. So I'll make that a separate file in case I screw up later. And then I'm going to copy that into the texture. So paste. So now that it's pasted in, note that I've also added a radio layer into this texture. I'm trying to make each detail a layer. And this way it's much easier to fix later if something goes wrong. The main thing is the radio is more or less spaced there. I'm going to rescale it later because it turned out that this was not as accurate as I thought. And I experimented with a few things but found that in fact all of these are a little bit bigger than I'm scaling them to here, relatively speaking. Uh, that's the cigarette lighter. Much simpler to do. Again, it, the perspective makes it a little bit inaccurate, but it's going to be so small that it doesn't have to be a problem, actually. Again, compromise. If this were a professional job, well, obviously you get a an actual Chevy Vega and take photographs and take measurements and so on. I've already said this. So it goes there. I often wonder if somebody burned their finger uh, confusing the radio knob and the cigarette lighter knob, actually. 
There's the heater control, which also includes the air conditioning control. I'm not sure how many Vegas actually got air conditioning, but this one is a standardized heater control for GM vehicles of that era with air conditioning. So move that into place. That's the washer and wiper control. Again, more or less standard for that era. And that went over on the left because General Motors cars generally had their wiper controls on the left. The fact that so many vehicles today have it on the right is not something that General Motors originally did. And of course, if you know old GM cars, you also know that the lights had their control knob on the left as well. So that will be next once I rescale this. Interestingly, these controls had labels on them right below them. So I have to add those very crudely, I might add. I'm just using the standard sans serif font from GIMP for this. Again, I'm hoping that the scale is so small it's not even going to be legible. In the finished version anyway. There's my cheesy silliness of trying to get every detail without necessarily 100% accuracy. Now the headlight control. But at first I have to respace this and see it was slightly off there. So headlight knob, that's the next the headlight knob is the next thing. There it is. Again, perspective is off. I'm gonna scale it way down and hopefully nobody notices. Trying to match it with the size of the other knobs, because my sense is the knobs were a standard design and they just changed the label on them, depending on where they would be placed on the dash. And again, the label. By the time I was a kid, GM cars didn't have such convenient logos and labels on everything anymore. They were either like silver knobs that were blank or whatever a lot of the time style over substance maybe <laughs> anyway that's it thanks for watching